Today I will show you how to build an evaporative cooler so you can keep your intermediate to highland nepenthes nice and cold at night. Here we go. Okay, let's take a look on how to build an evaporative cooler so you can cool your grow tent. Let's start with the tank. This is an 18 gallon tote, just some regular plastic tote I found at Target for $5 can see the specifics here. I believe it is 18 gallons. Let's show you a bit of how it works and what parts I use. So on the outside here, there's simply just some metal tubing that I use to direct the airflow inside the tent. And then just some uh, random fan I found it on Amazon, I think. Um, again, all the parts will be in the description below to the Amazon so I can buy these yourself. But simply, I have it on full power and also the thing on the inside, which I'll show you next, basically all go into this timer here. Okay, so this is what makes the evaporative cooler cool. So here we simply have, see if I can get it out here, literally just an evaporative disc, one of those ultrasonic humidifying pucks. So that just comes with a housing here. So as you saw, I took it out of the case, but it literally just slides in here, and then you have something to float the disc at the proper height so it can work. So as the water drains, it will keep it, this thing at the right height so it evaporates. All you do is just put it in, goes down, there's a little channel for the wire, and you put this in here, and boom, floats. Now I gotta put the lid back on so it doesn't just hang there, but that's how it works. Then with the lid on, you can see it just floats there at the perfect height. So that is everything you'll need to build the evaporative cooler, but let's show you how to put it together. First, you'll need to put two holes into the lid here. One for the tubing, the outlet, and then one for the fan, which is the inlet. You can see there, just cut it out with a Dremel. Nothing too fancy. It doesn't fit perfectly, but it works. Then you'll just need to put it in and uh, seal the gaps with some duct tape. I do need to replace this. This has been working for several months, but I really just need to put a bit more tape on it, especially the uh, output so I can make sure it has a proper seal because if it doesn't then you're risking some efficiency which will not make it output as much as a cold draft. And as for wiring I just have the uh, ultrasonic um, humidifying puck and the fan go all the way into this power strip and that power strip goes all the way to a timer in which will turn on and off the power to this whole system. So I basically have it on all night and then periodically throughout the day. So it is now plugged in and working. I just have it on the inside of the tent here. Just put it in. Um, it's one of the side zippers. But uh, fan is on and blowing. See the uh, humidifying disc is working. If I were to turn off the fan real quick, you'd see that it does work very well to make a bunch of fog. And turn it back on again. So yeah, let's hop inside the tent here real quick. <laughs> Everything's looking awesome right now. Then behind the Fintercosa Sibionix is Burkia Jacqueline. I'll just slide this guy out of the way. You can see the tubing. So I have it pointed in here. There's pretty good airflow. I can feel it is noticeably colder. And it's pretty awesome. So there, it doesn't work well in every condition, however. That's the one downside to evaporative cooling rather than like a compressor-based air conditioner. It does need to be 
drier air in order for it to have that cooling, evaporative cooling effect. The outside climate out, or the climate outside my tent in the basement is roughly 40%, 40 to 50% humidity. If you have a more humid condition, then it will not cool as much. As you can see, things are growing amazingly here. It does manage to get this tent down to around 65, 64 degrees um, when it was normally getting around 70 degrees at night. But let me grab this humidity and, and temperature monitor and literally just see if I can balance it in there so we can take some readings while I show off some plants. Okay, just look at some plants real quick while it does its thing. Okay, so this one is Mira. It's one of my favorite species coming from Palawan. And you can see it is flowering. Oh, that was so cool. You know, this plant isn't big at all. I mean, it's like four or five inches across and it already has a flower. The Mira complex along with that includes Diniana, Leonardo Y, and I think maybe one more species often flowers at a small size like this, or at least sexually matures at a small size. They can get way bigger though. Spathula spectabilis is doing incredible. It's always so stripey when it first pops. I did have a big, a lot of maxima just right here hanging, but I did have to move it down. Here's a picture for it. I did have to move it down because there's a flower coming in. That little bump there's a flower. It's a pretty decent sized flower too. I've gotten a flashlight behind it and I have seen it. It is a pretty, it is indeed a flower. War Rock is awesome. This is Grisophora or Alada B. This one's the latest upper pitcher. Whoa. I just have a jungly mess on this little table here that my brother made for me. Everything is just so tightly packed, especially over here. Got the Anthurium Vichii that's tangled up with the Grisophora. You know, we got a really cool Rafflesiana back here. Really freaking cool. I am planning on building a lowland chamber soon, so that should be even better when that accustoms to that. The sky, I hope, will come back. The little rise on whatever you call it is still super tough, so there's hope. Capensis. Whatever this is called. Blanking at the moment, moments. Cephalorus folliculus, that's it. Pretty cool. Okay, let's check on the temperature real quick. You can see it's at 62.6 degrees, and that honestly, that's pretty dang cold. I've never seen it get down that cold. So, thank you for watching, guys. I hope you have a fantastic day. If you have any questions, Leave it in the comments below, but that is all for me. I will leave you with this amazing picture right here. This is Raja Cross Aime. Have a good one, guys. See ya. We have just some simple metal um, air tubing. Metal tubing. This is great because it's long, flexible, I've seen it inside 